What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the man cave. We are back here in the man cave. Uh, earlier today, I made a video about um, essentials for your hunting pack. And I posted it and uploaded that video. And uh, hopefully some of you guys will take the time to check that out. And I do apologize. It's quite a lengthy video. I think it's like 54 minutes. It's a long video. And I know most people don't want to watch a video that long. Hopefully some of you will take the time because I feel like there's some good information in that video. But uh, anyway, it's late. I have been doing different things all day today. Earlier, you know, I, I had grass cutting to do and things like that. But um, I'm kind of a night owl on the weekends. And uh, I just decided while I was awake, I'm going to make another video. Um, you know, I'm still hoping to get out and do some action type videos where I'm out doing things that interest all of you um i mentioned in my previous video i'd like to do some rattlesnake hunting this weekend the weather has really just not been cooperating the rain and whatnot um so hopefully i can get out to do that or play around a golf or do something where i can get some more good video footage and make a nice entertaining video for everyone uh, i'm going to try to keep this particular video 15 minutes or so so that hopefully it'll get more views because i don't think that 54 minute video is going to get a lot of interest um anyway uh so earlier video on essentials for your hunting pack just something to kind of kick off the channel get started try to develop a little interest from some of my viewers um in that same category or um in the same likeness of that video this is going to have a similar theme to it however this is going to be about just one specific kit that I've assembled. And this kit does go in the hunting pack, but it also goes in my everyday carry pack or in my truck or, you know, it stays very handy in the house. I'd like to make a few of these kits so that I can have one in all of the locations where it's imperative to have it. Uh, this goes camping with me. This goes in the woods with me, wherever, you know, wherever it might be. But anyhow, I want to show you this. I built this myself. Like, I, I basically assembled this kit myself using the waterproof plastic case that you can get at any sporting goods store, hunting store, or uh, Walmart even carries these. I think I did buy this one at Walmart, in fact. Um, this is my fire starting kit, okay? Now, how many different ways can you make fire? A lot of different ways, and why would anybody want to make fire other than using a standard cigarette lighter? Uh, you know, if you're just around the house having a bonfire in the backyard or, you know, burning your cardboard for the week or whatever you do that requires you to make a fire, then yeah, standard cigarette lighter and a little bit of lighter fluid would be all you'd need to use. Um, I'm all about options, guys. I like to have options and I like to have backup plans. I was never a Boy Scout. Uh... But their motto of be prepared is a, is a great motto. And I've always kind of lived by it. Even though I was never a Boy Scout, it just kind of sunk into me to always be prepared. Always know what's going on around you and be prepared for any situation that may crop up. So that being said, uh, I do this a lot. I, I build kits, things that could be essential or necessary in the event that something happens or you just need it or you want to use it for fun. You never know. Um so, 99.9% of the time, the standard cigarette lighter is going to get a fire started for you if you need to start a fire. But if you're out, uh, you know, whether it's camping or hunting or hiking or bi bicycling, traveling, whatever, there may come a time <coughs> where it's essential or necessary to light a fire, uh, to cook on, to stay warm to heat up an area, uh, to burn some brush or I don't know, whatever people use fire for. I mean, the cavemen figured it out and they did it a lot harder than using a Bic lighter. So, um, I put together this little fire kit and I'm about to disassemble it and show you what all's in it and talk about a few more items that are not in it because there's not room. Uh, they, I'm going to try to rebuild this. This is like the perfect size, but if I can squeeze some more in here, I will. 
uh, but I don't think I'm going, going to be able to. So I may have to find a little con uh, container that does just a little bit more. But for now, this is my fire kit, but I'm going to mention a few other items that will be in this kit when it's big enough to accommodate. So let's get started real quick. Uh, we're already at five minutes on this video. I want to try to keep it under, you know, 15 or less. Um, so waterproof case, buy it anywhere. Not very expensive. Of course, the waterproof case is to keep all of your fire starting essentials from getting wet so that they work when you need them. Otherwise, you can just put them in a pouch or a backpack or whatever you want to carry them in. Uh, so let's begin here. Um, of course, we have your standard uh, Bic lighter, which is in this kit somewhere. There it is right there. Okay. Whoops. So we have, sorry, fumbling. So we have our standard Bic lighter that just does its normal thing. Self-explanatory. It's one way to start a fire. Okay. If the fire is being difficult to get lit, we might switch over to something like this. And this is a half. Uh, earlier in my other video, I showed you a complete uh, Duraflame fire log. This is a half of one because it fits in the kit better. I broke it in half, basically just wrapped it back up and now it fits. But Duraflame fire logs are easy to get lit, especially using a butane lighter. Uh, and they burn pretty hot and pretty well for uh, enough time that you can get some kindling on a fire. And even if the kindling is slightly wet, this will burn hot enough to hopefully dry out that kindling and get it get it rolling for you so you can get a decent fire going. So I always keep one of these handy in my fire starting kit in the event that it's necessary. Now, should this fail or this not be handy or it's already been used up and not replaced in the kit, there is another option. I haven't actually got to try one of these out yet, but I've seen plenty of demonstrations of them, so I'm sure they'll work. Uh, we have five, four or five cubes of this wet fire. And there it is right there, okay? And these are like basically like a bullion cube. Um, guys, don't ask me scientifically what the hell this is made of, but supposedly, and I've seen demonstrations done online, you can light this and then drop it in a glass of water and it'll continue to burn. It basically lights under any circumstances and produces a hot blue flame for, I don't know, a couple minutes until it's used up. And then by then, if you don't have some kindling on the fire, you're probably not going to get it started. But this is another alternative. If you have a wet situation and none of your kindling will burn right away, you light a couple of these cubes and use that hot blue flame to dry out your target kindling and... Uh, Hopefully it'll catch it and you can build from there. Might be a little bit of a process. Uh, in my earlier video with the hunting backpack, I mentioned a Zippo lighter. And in that particular case, the Zippo lighter was, uh, let me see, pardon me while I step away from the camera for just one second here. Uh, okay. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so... This Zippo lighter was the one I demonstrated earlier in my other video. It, of course, has the butane insert, okay? And it has a nice hot blue flame, double flame. And this is great for getting something like this started. Uh, it's also more windproof, so it won't blow out as easily. And it provides a little bit more flexibility as far as what you can do when you're making a fire using this. So I replaced... The old traditional Zippo insert that you're used to seeing with a flint, okay, flint and steel and a wick. You put oil in this, you put the Zippo fluid, not oil, but Zippo fluid in this, put it back in the lighter and use it like your standard Zippo. Or you can take that insert out and install one of these, okay, butane. Zippo fluid, lighter fluid, all right? You guys know the difference, you've, you've seen it. Now I keep this standard Zippo that uses the Zippo fluid in my fire starting kit along with the normal Bic lighter, okay? So you've got your butane, 
even though it's just a normal flame, it's not the torch. You got your butane and you've got your Zippo fluid. You have options, okay? <laughs> One option may be better than the other. And I'll tell you why this might be a better option and why. Now, this is my everyday lighter. This is my pocket every day. So I'm probably gonna have this butane torch with me too if I need to make a fire. It won't be in this kit, but it'll probably be somewhere handy with me in my vehicle or on me because I always carry this lighter with me every day. Um, but this is in the kit. Even though I'm not a big fan of Zippo fluid lighters because they're messy and they stink and they're just overall a pain in the ass to maintain because when that wick burns down, you have to replace it and all that shit. This is handy in a fire starting kit and here's why. Not only is it a good source of continuous flame, which gives you that opportunity to get hard to light objects to actually catch fire, but they make, and this is one thing that's not in the kit right now, and I don't even have it handy right now to show you on camera, but I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. The fuel that goes in this, the Zippo fluid, they make it in big giant bottles, but they also make it in these little mini bottles that aren't much bigger than maybe a pack of cigarettes or something just slightly bigger than a pack of cigarettes, maybe the size of a cell phone. It's just a thin, narrow bottle of official Zippo fluid to fill this up. Now, what I'm planning to do and what the reason I'm showing you this kit, one of the things that you would add to this kit, which I'm going to add to this kit, is one of those small bottles of Zippo fluid for this lighter. <laughs> uh, pardon me for... I have a frog in my throat today and I have to keep clearing my throat. Uh, so you fill this up. Now it's useful until it dries up. But what you also have in your kit is the fluid. You can use that just like standard lighter fluid that you would pour on a campfire to get it lit. So you have another ability. You have another flammable substance that you can add to your fire to give you that advantage of making your fire. So kind of a dual purpose of carrying a standard Zippo and the fluid to go with it. So along with the waterproof or the wet fire that lights easily, the Duraflame that lights fairly easily because this is all infused with lighter fluid, your standard lighter, your Zippo, of course me having my butane torch in my pocket as well, and then of course we have matches and they're in a waterproof case, but they're also waterproof matches. They are it's maybe very difficult to see, but you see how shiny that is? The reason that's so shiny is because it has a coating on it to keep that match head from getting wet so that it'll strike under any conditions. These are basically, I don't want to say strike anywhere matches because those would be blue tip matches, and those are also handy to have, which I don't have any of those. I'll have to get some of those. Um, but... Uh, Waterproof matches is what these are. They're Coleman waterproof matches for camping, and they're carried in a waterproof container. Now, along with that, and I know this is very redundant, but I've also got the box of waterproof matches. It's a full, complete box as well as these. And here's why. This has a tiny little striker on the inside of the cap, and it's very difficult to get a match to strike off of the striker that's on this. So the box is really for the striker. Yes, it's got extra matches, which is handy. And if they stay dry in this waterproof kit, they're useful as well. But the strikers on both sides of the box are really what I carry the extra box of matches for. Because the matches in this are the same matches that are in that box, but they're hard to get struck off of the cap of this kit. It's not easy. Uh, it can be done, but it can be frustrating as well. Um... <laughs> two other neat items that I added, and this is one of the, this takes up a little bit of space, but in my eyes, it's worth it because again, it gives you another alternative and it has a backup purpose, uh, two backup purposes, to be honest with you. Uh, this is great because now what this is, is a tin, but it's a citronella candle. Okay. And it smells like s'mores. Yeah. It has a great scent to it as well. Um, if I take this lid off of here real quick, if I can get it off. And we're up to 14 minutes already, and uh, I'm already going over that time frame, but you know what? I don't care. So it's a brand new candle. It hasn't been lit. This thing, it smells pretty good. 
It does have like a little bit of a chocolatey marshmallow smell to it. Not that that really matters, but it smells better than standard citronella. Standard citronella stinks pretty good. But it is a citronella candle, and it's got a crackling wick for ambiance, I guess. I don't fucking know. Uh, it has a s'more scent, but it burns for 25 hours. This little candle, I mean, this thing fits in that case. It was in that case whenever it was locked and I showed it to you. This tiny little candle on this metal tin with a lid will burn for 25 hours. Guys, if you can't get a fire lit off of this in 25 hours, don't go to the woods or don't go camping or don't pray you never need a fire. So when all else fails and you can't get a fire lit, you go to this because you can set this under your kindling. Now, granted, you're going to ruin the candle or burn it all out. But at least you'll get your kindling and your wood lit and burning. So an all else fail situation, you whip this sucker out and you've got yourself 25 hours of flame that you can try to get a fire lit off of. And that's pretty handy. Now, granted, you have to use a cigarette lighter to light this, but you have options once you get this lit, okay? <laughs> um, the other... There's two other benefits to this. One, citronella keeps the bugs away. So if you're if you're in the great outdoors, which is typically where you're going to need a fire, you light this nearby you. It doesn't matter if you're using it to start a fire or if you're just using it for its intended purpose, which is to provide bug protection. Now the mosquitoes and the insects leave you alone because they don't like the citronella. And on top of that, it's a great light source. It's not a flashlight. I would prefer to pull a flashlight out of my backpack and use it. But if you needed just a, a small light source in a pinch, you can light this citronella candle, which is harmless. It's in its own tin, so you can hold it comfortably without the tin getting too hot. It may get hot eventually, so watch yourself. But you can actually use it like a small light source to find your way in the dark or to light up your tent or whatever you might need in order to see in the dark. Just what flame was always used for in the first place, a light source. So you got a little lantern here, you got bug protection, and you've got a 25-hour source of being able to get a real fire lit by using this up. I mean, granted, like, again, if you start a fire on top of this, you're probably not going to be able to fish it back out from underneath the fire and save it. You're probably going to ruin this, but at least it saved your life or served its purpose for the day that you needed the fire. Because if you're building a fire with this, you're desperate, okay? So, um... That's another another good item there. <laughs> of course, a fire starter of uh, flint and steel are handy to have as well, or even just a fire rod and a, a steel knife of any type that you would carry. Uh, those are not included in this kit because those are elsewhere in other packs. Um, I felt like I had enough in this kit for now. I've got 100 ways to make fire at this point, so why keep piling on? But you could add to this kit a fire steel or fire rod, um, and that's another great way to make a flame. And then one more tip or trick, uh, little known to some, others know this really well, Vaseline burns extremely well. Uh, it's that grease, that oil that's in Vaseline takes a flame really well and burns really hot and stays lit for quite some time. So, of course, you don't want to carry around a big jar of Vaseline that's the size of this because now you're lugging around two big objects. But they make Vaseline in those little tubes that you would apply to your lips or just to have a little handy tube in case you need it for whatever you need it for. Um, so a little tube of Vaseline would fit in this kit very nicely. And I do intend to add one of those to this kit whenever I can get a hold of one. Every time I'm at a convenience store that sells those little tubes, I always forget to pick one up. But I intend to add a little tube of Vaseline to this. And what I'll, what I'll also throw in here when I get the Vaseline is a few cotton balls. Because it's good to have some kind of a tinder to put the Vaseline on. You don't want to really apply the Vaseline right directly to the wood. Excuse me. Because it's probably going to burn up too fast for the wood to actually catch. So what you want is a cotton ball soaked in it. You light the cotton ball, use it as your tinder to get your um, to get your uh, kindling to catch. And then on the subject of kindling, 
uh, you know, if you're desperate for a fire, again, this is kind of out of disparity. Any other time, 98% of the time, we're going to use a Bic lighter and make our fire and be done with it. This kit is out of disparity. What if we need to make fire and all the standard methods have failed us? We've lost our lighter. The lighter won't work. The weather's too bad for it. We still need to make a fire, whatever. This is not an option. This is no longer an option. Now we're down to the more difficult ways to make a fire, but we still can be successful. So ultimately, the last thing that I've included in this kit, and I feel this is very handy, you all might laugh about it a little bit because it's chintzy, <laughs> but it's cheap. It's, you know, like six bucks on any website or Amazon or survival gear or whatever you find. But I'm not going to unfurl the whole thing. But what we have here is a little saw. Okay. It's a sharp wire. It's like razor wire. Um, it won't cut you to touch it, but definitely it's abrasive. And if you rubbed it against your skin hard enough, you'd cut yourself. Um, and of course you can see it's got two handles on either side. So the way this is supposed to work is when it's unfurled, of course, when you get this loop going, you unfurl it, you put it on either side of a piece of wood, and then you go back and forth with it. It will saw through wood. It really will. It'll cut small branches and, you know, decent sized diameter branch like this. It'll go right through that in just a few short seconds. So if you don't have ready, ready, excuse me, I can't speak today. If you don't have readily available small kindling to make your fire with, you can cut yourself some. Go find a small sapling or some small branches sticking off of a tree. Preferably, dr the drier the better. A dead tree would be way better. Um, so you go find yourself those small branches. And we've all done this when we're looking for kindling for a fire. What's the first thing we do? We go find a dead tree with a weird crooked branch sticking off of it. And it's a thin piece of branch, and we know that if we get several pieces of that, that'll make great kindling. But what's the first thing we do? We all grab a hold of it, and we start pulling on it, and eventually, snap -o, it comes off, and you fall flat on your ass, or you poke yourself with it, or it doesn't break off all the way, and then you're doing the twist thing, trying to get it to come off. It's a pain in the butt to try to break branches off of a live tree or a dead tree. It doesn't matter. So this just makes life a little bit easier and it's so compact, you know, it folds right up. It's just nice and, you know, nice and flimsy here as far as the straps go and the, the coil itself wraps up on itself. So you just, you know, tuck this away in your fire starting kit and you've got a way to saw some kindling. You're not going to saw down a tree with it. Obviously it's not meant for that. Uh, it's not a chainsaw for Christ's sake, but it's enough to get you some fire starting kindling and then you can add some better size wood to it as your fire gets rolling so that's it guys 22 minutes we beat our 54 minute record by a lot but we didn't keep it under 15 anyway um if you like the content like the video please i'd appreciate it um you know if you found any of this to be useful uh or if you think i'm an idiot comment below that i'm an idiot and i don't need 20 ways to start a fire Whatever. If you like the video, please like, please click the like button. If you like the content of my videos and the, and the direction I'm going with this channel, please, it would be uh, wonderful if you'd hit the subscribe button <laughs> and just keep up with what I'm doing. You can even hit the notifications button, the bell at the bottom, and it'll let you know when I post new videos, which I'm trying to get on a roll of doing this, which is why I'm sitting up late at night making these silly little videos so that I've got some different content to add to the channel. So pretty much that's it, guys. That is my self-made fire starting kit what's in it what i intend to add to it if you have any other bright ideas please comment below what those ideas are if you if you've got your own fire kit or your own methods of starting a fire in a pinch tell me about them i'd love to add it to my kit if it seems like it's something that could be useful or sensible to me so um that covers it guys that is my fire starting kit and uh probably build a couple more of these just to add to my other packs and vehicles and things like that so that uh there's always read readily available fire handy if necessary all right guys that wraps it up for this edition for this for this episode of the man cave and i hope you all enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and stay safe out there take care folks